Well, you and I had quite a lengthy conversation about all the issues involved in copyright, uh, in collecting and creating a, an archives, and, and some of the different ways that can be approached and how we would handle it. And in this room, you probably have more experience than anybody in that realm. So if you want to sort of relay some of the concerns you relayed to me about that. Uh, sure. Well, uh, there are, I guess there's several standards for the way that archives deal with copyright and it depends on the it basically depends on the agreement that you make with the donor and it also has something to do with whether the donor actually owns the material that they're donating so that's a kind of an important distinction um, Many archives will hold materials without owning the copyright. Uh, so, for instance, when I was working on my documentary about Leonard Bernstein, I was given access to their humongous collection of letters that had been written to Leonard Bernstein. And they're good... Uh, kind of benchmark to look at. So Leonard Bernstein had received letters from many uh, famous people, including Elvis Presley and Miles Davis and all different kinds of people, Jackie Kennedy, Teddy Kennedy. The way that the, that the copyright laws work is that uh, the, le the letters, the paper that the letters were written on were owned by Leonard Bernstein. In other words, his, he and his family own the artifacts, but the copyright to the text or the intellectual property is retained by the author of the letter. So those letters are all at the Library of Congress, but the Library of Congress cannot authorize the use of the letters, but anybody can go down there and read them. Tell, so, them, I, tell them I don't want the letter, I just want the paper. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so that so that's a, that's a kind of an important distinction. Now, if that's crazy, if the library wanted to, they could probably reach out to the authors of each letter and ask them to transfer the copyright, but they hadn't done that. Now, in the case of interviews, you get into like a a number of other issues. Like, for instance, with Coltrane. Here's a famous Coltrane interview that Lewis has uh, that was done by Ralph Gleason, the writer for Rolling Stone. And that interview is copied in, in collections all over the world now. But it's technically owned by Toby Gleason, who's Ralph's son, who demands a lot of money for using it. I wanted to use some of it in my documentary on Coltrane, and he was extremely unreasonable. But then, it was interesting, because at the beginning of the interview, John Coltrane says, you can hear it on the tape, he's, he, he points at a tape recorder, and he asks Ralph, Why, what are you doing with the tape? And Ralph says, oh, don't worry, John, I promise this will never, ever be used for any other purpose. I'm just uh, recording it for notes, for the liner notes, for the album. Which indicates that he never asked Coltrane for a signed release. So in that case, Toby doesn't really own the interview. I would argue that the interview is owned by the Coltrane estate mm -hmm. and the Coltrane family because it's because he never signed away the rights to it, even though he willingly gave the interview. So it gets it get there are a lot of nuances to this that, that make all, all this stuff very. Um, and I'm having a, an issue now with a certain important archive where a former colleague of mine took interviews that I conducted by myself and shared with him for professional writing purposes, and he sold the interviews to, to an archive and said that he owned the interviews, and they said that he had possession of the interviews and didn't steal them from me, and therefore they were in the same category as the letters. In other words, that he owned the paper, and I am disputing that, and and I think it's something that needs to be cleared up by 
people like us. I think it's a it's a it's a kind of a complicated distinction that you get into. And as we go along as a group, or as you go along as a group, getting some clarity on these issues once you get into the comp complicated ones uh, would be important. Steve, would you suggest that before we do any um, extended filmed interviews that we have a lawyer outline this for us or to protect everybody or what would you recommend us doing? Oh, well, when you, if you're going to do new interviews, yeah, we are. sit down with somebody, you just ask the person who's doing the interview to sign the release that gives you okay. all the rights that you want. Okay, I have the release. That's pretty simple. Okay. And it, and it can be just a very short one or two paragraph release, and then you then you would own then you would own the interview. Okay. That's what I do when I do interviews. I ask people to sign a release so I own the interview. Okay. Say, hey, Steve, would you mind showing us the form that you use? No, I'd be happy to share it with you. Thank you. Well, all right, so yeah. you, you'll email it to me and then I'll forward it to you. And me. I can compare it to what we have, what Jasperidge has, because we have a oh, nonprofit okay. release form. Good. So, because we, we promise people when we film them, it will only be used for nonprofit purposes okay. that are related to Jasperidge. Yeah. So, okay. And, and one, one nice way of doing it that I advocate is a an equitable release that offers the person giving the interview half ownership of the of the material okay. so they can basically they can do whatever they want with it if they want to publish a book or write a memoir or something like that sure. they can have a copy of the interview and use it freely as as can the interviewer right it's, it's and the a, interviewer also can do it's that a, it's a shared copyright yeah that's really good. exactly right yeah right okay yeah and i think um but, you know, the the <clears throat> arrangement we're kind of working on in, in terms of conceptually with this is that if people, uh, donors of archival materials, uh, don't want to give up the copyright, we would agree to accept the physical custody and ownership of the materials, and they would retain the copyright if they insist on that. Okay. So what that would mean would be, as an archives, and as Steve has said, anybody who wants to come and do research can have access to those materials for research purposes. But if they wanted to, you know, publish them or, or reproduce them or put them on a web or something, then they would have to go back to the copyright owner uh, to do that. Now, I'm sure you deal with this all the time, Diane. And, uh, uh, and the problem with that is if, you know, you have 80 different collections in your archive and 80 different... Uh, copyright owners and then they die and you've got to find their kids and their grandkids and you know so most archives prefer that when the stuff gets donated that the copyright goes with it but if somebody and I can understand if they feel that they own these if it's a musician and there's rehearsal tapes or things like that that they don't want to give up the copyright to that I think we would agree to let them retain that and we would retain the physical ownership and they would retain the copyright it's not the most convenient for operational purposes, but it, you know. Yes. One of the things, though, is that at this time and moving forward, the focus is on a digital archive. Right. So once, and I'm sure you can talk about it, once it's been digitized and people, anybody has access to it, and it then all the other stuff is really for the courts. Right. right. The, yeah, the onus of the copyright or the breaking of the copyright lies with the person who publishes it, lies with the user. So you can, if you put up a statement, this is for research purposes only under fair use, you know, library and archives can have fair use guidelines, but, you know, it's, if someone takes what you're offering for fair use and publishes it, they're the ones that broke the copyright. So there's not too much worry, but but you do have to double check when you put something online because right. yes. you are duplicating it. Right. 